Hello and welcome to Behind the Mods of Skyrim. My name is Tori. My name is Tyler. Today what we're going to be doing is kind of going behind the scenes of the mod creation process. We have questions that you guys, our community, has asked that we'll get to in the back half. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is be asking questions that we have prepared for Be Very of A, Skyrim mod creator. Say hello. How's it going? So what we're going to do, we're not going to be referring to you as be very of a the whole time. It, like you said earlier, it just doesn't really roll off the tongue. Uh, <laughs> so Kennedy is what we'll be using. It, yeah, if uh, I mean, it, you could shorten it to very if you wanted to. Uh, uh, very, whenever, I like that. W- whenever whenever I get in like to like a, a, a room on a game or something and they don't know how to say my name, I'm always Barry, <laughs> 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 which All is right. just funny. <laughs> Barry, well, I, I like <laughs> Barry, very Kennedy. Thank you for being our guest today. You guys are welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, why don't you tell us tell us a little bit about yourself and your your sort of background in modding? Background in modding. I think the way that I would kind of break it down is it probably started back when I was playing Final Fantasy VII for PlayStation One. Um, the Game Shark was really really big, and that was kind of the closest thing that you had to you know being able to have like a modded start of of your video game. Um, Coincidentally, it turns out that there are some other very, very prominent like PS4 modders that actually made codes for the, for Final Fantasy VII for the Game Shark. Oh, no kidding. uh, Yeah, I think uh, LBGSHI. uh, Oh, wow. uh, He he used to write codes for, uh, for Game Shark like way back in the day. So like anything to do with like the when they like redid or made Final Fantasy VII better, like that guy's got more codal insight onto that game than anybody. And he's only a couple years older than me. So it was just like, it's so bizarre being able to talk to him. It's just like we were, it was like, you know, it's sort of like, you know, like the idea of staring up at the same sky and knowing that everyone throughout history has looked at that. But to know that you're just like, it's like we were looking at the same screen the whole time. Like, yeah. You know? And then, and then we run into each other like years and years later. It's like, this is, <laughs> this is so cool. Small so world. it's so very small world. Um, I love with like I've I've played so many Bethesda games in the past. Uh, not not absolutely all of them. Uh, I need to. I wish I could go back and play like the old uh, the old Fallout games. I'm just not as nuts about the isometric design, even though they're some of my favorite games are like that. Planescape Torment is one of my favorite games, and it's like very isometric, but it's also like the the top of of that you know that food chain. It's always really hard to go back into those games. Like once once you've almost gone so far. Yeah, especially when you start modding too, because it's like you you realize it's like, oh my gosh, like it's not just like the little things that I can't live without, like the you know, the goofy little stuff that I can start my game off with, but it's like just all the bug fixes that you mm-hmm. know, that that void your achievement list or whatever. It's just like, ah, oh, like it's I uh, I really, really enjoyed playing with mods on Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas. The uh, they have still some of like the in terms of where I would rather be if I could go back and play New Vegas and play A Tale of Two Wastelands, which is somebody basically figured out how to take all the file archives from Fallout 3, turn them into mod assets and put them into Fallout New Vegas. So you can play Fallout 3 and New Vegas in the same playthrough and switch back and forth between the Mojave and DC. And it's just like, oh, my God, there is like that is. That's probably the inse- like the the inception of like Bruma and a lot of those extended Skyrim mods because it's just like yep. oh my gosh like it was it's such a, a lucky place in time for those games to be knowing that they run like basically on the same engine and stuff so right yeah, yeah. it would uh, it's the, and I think that's that community is still going I still see updates on the Nexus for a lot of those um, a lot of those mods that are you know 10, 12 years old it's it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. As, aside from the the modding that you bring to Skyrim on PS4, do you do any in the Fallout world at all? If I had those, I I might consider it. I don't have a copy of. Uh, I had a copy of Fallout Four for PS4, but I didn't have the uh, the PC copy. Okay. Um. That'll that basically ties into how you know how people get into modding, but you basically need a copy of the the PC version and the console version. Okay. Is that, so that is that kind of where the creation club lives, or the, sorry, uh, the creation kit? Yeah, the creation kit is uh, it requires you to have those like the Skyrim.esm, Skyrim.exe, okay. Dragonborn.esm, 
uh, Dawn Guard, Hearth Fire. It requires you to have all of those master files like ready to be drawn from as archives in order for it to to load up. Yeah. So like after Final Fantasy and coming from those games, uh, was had you always been into kind of like ripping open the game to see what makes up the guts of it, or it, was that something that was brought back because of Bethesda games? Um, when I really started getting into the I like. What got me into Skyrim modding was definitely uh, having tested for... Um, I was briefly part of a, a group that was testing for uh, Dreamweaver, Ports of Call, and Smuggler's Cove. Oh, cool. Yeah, great, uh, those, great mods. Th- those got Treehawk, Mika Ghost, Kyan49, some of the... They are like three of the most talented modders that you will ever meet, but you will barely ever get them on the phone or on like for them to reply to you. They are really busy and like just... They're, they're on a whole nother level. I learned basically everything that I learned about, you know, texture stuff from just like a paragraph that I translated from Cayenne 49 off of a forum for several years ago. So oh, like, yeah, what, for sure. what would like your history with Skyrim be like, what, like, does that attachment come from something? Did you get the game when it came out or like, what was it Bethesda that brought you to Skyrim? Uh, I definitely had. It, because I I had played uh, Fallout Three and New, or I I definitely played a lot of Fallout Three. I hadn't played New Vegas yet because it was very very buggy on the console at the time. I went back and played it later because the uh, the Game of the Year edition at least cleared up some of those problems. Um, but my my younger brother got it for Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. I think when it came out, and after watching him play it for a bit, he he's much more of a He's, he's much more of a triple A gamer. Like he does really well in games like call of duty, but there was just something about Skyrim that I, I don't think that he, he didn't play dungeons and dragons like me. I think he appreciates it, but he hasn't spent the hours in front of like the, the pen and paper aspect of it to really appreciate like how slow moving progression can sometimes work. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just a different mindset. Like I come from the, from the tabletop universe. So it's like, I, I see in a, in a way for me, like this is basically my chance to like, I don't have a D and D group anymore. I would, I, I might kill somebody for an actual D and D group again. Like <laughs> just it's, any human contact I, at this point, really. I, 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 and almost anybody, I, I think it would just, it would be so great to just have a D and D group again. Like the, I miss the immersion. I miss the camaraderie and I, I honestly just miss the dice rolling and stuff. Just the idea that it's like, Oh man, like, something can really go wrong. Like there was, you know, there are no checkpoints and save points in RPG. It's like, you are kind of at the master of how, how nice your relationship is with your dungeon master. (laughs) So was it, is it that medieval setting and like the slow progression? Like you're, you're just generally a fan of RPGs that brought you into Skyrim. And there was something about the way that they opened up the, the, the story is open-ended so you can, you can beat the final boss, all of them, and you can still keep playing. It's not over. You can get a. I, I've gotten a platinum trophy three times in a single playthrough before. Like not obviously not the same platinum trophy three times, but like in a single save game, I can do a hundred. I can do a hundred percent run, and I almost did it from memory the last time, which is just not like I'm so burnt out on vanilla content. Like how many times do you find the like all pieces of the crowns of Baron Zaya before you just like die. Like, yeah, yeah. before you just it's, need, like, yeah, please like, give me something else, a flying bucket or something, please. It, it, it pretty much. And so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm basically at the point where I want to create my own sort of D and D campaign for myself within the world of Skyrim where oh, yeah. everything that could have gone wrong basically did go wrong. And do you mean that more in terms of uh, like environmental, like the way you would build out that section of, however you would go about it, it would be less so people coming up and telling you a story and more so look at this environmental, like the detail I put into it. Yeah. It's like if there was an alternate universe of Skyrim where everything was almost kind of the same, I really like Rick and Morty and Dr. Who type of stuff where just the idea that there is a very, very close, like the idea that there's a very close nearby universe where you like, we're not only have we all three had this conversation before, but We've had it an infinite number of times. It doesn't matter what we say. We've already said it like an infinite number of times. And then there's an alternate universe where all three of us are somehow the same fucking person. It's it's kind of like that. In my in my particular case, I really liked um, I, I liked her, uh, Hermaeus Mora a lot, like as a as a character, because he seemed to have his basically his tendrils in almost every single part of the story. But like until Dragonborn, it's really played kind of 
you know, in the dark. But in this particular one, the the campaign setting would basically be he's set up some sort of Daedric conspiracy a really long time ago, prior to the events of Oblivion, trying to make sure that whatever happens with like when when Talos ma- mantled Lorcan at the end of Oblivion and basically like and Talos ascended to godhood. It took Lorcan out of that spot in the Pantheon where he was supposed to be at, and that created this weird rift. I think it might have uh, it might have actually had something to do with like the fall of like a Vivek onto Black Mountain or something. But like it was, um, but in this case, it, he basically conspired with all of the Daedra to like, okay, so we're not going to take back Tamriel one person at a time, like one of us at a time. You can't just recruit one champion. We all have to do something to take back. Tamriel, like the the Daedric princes are trying to take back Tamriel completely in this in this world. Hermaeus Mora is at the top. He's got all of the other ones basically under his thumb because the plan was good. And they're like, Psh, if we stand by this guy, like, fine, we'll lie to our champion. We don't care. But like when it comes to him, they basically use their their Daedric power to pull Alduin out of the time loop like two weeks early. They told him who the Dragonborn was and how he was going to be like how the story was basically going to end. And so Alduin eats the dragonborn, eats Ulfric's storm cloak. Lokir the red isn't even captured. And so he's, he's actually an agent of Lorcan in my story. He's basically a spy trying to basically put the timeline into motion. It's sort of his destiny to set the wheels in motion and die every single timeline. But the fact that he's alive now creates this, this weird warp. My character comes in because he lives inside the heart of Lorcan, which exists now because Instead of Lorcan mantling it, they they repositioned the heart of Lorcan to its own pocket dimension where it could be kept safe and away from mortals and stuff. So my character basically lives in the the realm of Lorcan in a in a endless time loop, basically making sure. And mm-hmm. Mora has got other plans for that. And so the heart of Lorcan is basically now in danger because the prophecy has been completely disrupted. There's no we don't know what's going to happen now. So it's like my character has to leave Lorcan, go to Tamriel, find a new dragonborn, which in, in this case is going to end up being the ebony warrior who is basically looking for redemption because it's part of his destiny to die at the hands of the dragonborn. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's yeah. Like I, I really just wanted to see like what happens if it becomes a group story? What happens if you're no longer the one that's really behind behind the wheels of everything and yeah. and what if you yeah. really have to push the story to make it work rather than it just kind of falling into place and right happening to you really getting to like put your own spin on it and i'm guessing there's like is is that where like other mods come in to like assist your storyline that you're building then absolutely in my in my campaign i basically consider other mods to be like other sort of pocket dimensions that have like merged oh, wow, with yeah. this main one so like I'm giving them way more credit than like, you know, normally like, oh, this is just a look at this interesting piece of ham. It's like, no, it's like this is a this is part of another universe that just like happens to now be part of this one. It's like so it's I take it like any involvement from another modder. It's basically like deity, like intervention almost like this is, you know, this is this is not just a, like a big deal. This is a, a very big change. When you're picking through mods then, like when you're just, you know, on your playthrough, like you're not creating mods, like when you're getting getting these kind of like uh, these other things from these other modders and universes, are you selecting a certain process with that? Like how do you select this will work, this will not work, or what's the what what do you do behind that? Uh, well, a lot of it's kind of set in stone from back when I was just using mods on ps4 and not actually making them but when i started actually like i mean i think it really started when i was working with the dreamweaver crew because they've got a very similar like kind of broad uh like that's that the dreamweaver series is basically based on a DD campaign that he's been running for like the last like 30 years so it's like it's like spanned back to like first edition and they've updated like every god what i wouldn't give to pick those guys brains like (laughs) they, they know so much and they're, you know, they've, they're like, he's like, Treehawk is as old as my dad. So he's got like way more insight into, into that, uh, pen and paper world than I do. So they've, they've been modding for a long, long time. When did you actually get into modding Skyrim? Like what was your first stab at it? Uh, it was, I think I bought a, I think I got a computer like last August or something. 
that that could, oh, that wow. could finally do it. Because I heard Treehawk basically say he made the he assembled the entirety of Dreamweaver on like a three hundred dollar Walmart laptop that was bought like years ago. So I was like, oh well, if that be the case, then like it doesn't have to be the craziest rig to to mod. Okay, so that's really good to know that the barrier of entry is not that steep. Right. Although I don't quote me on this. Uh, he could be using if if he's got a really really inferior machine he may in fact be using like the legendary edition which has a less finicky um creation kit the when you add the update in it there's a lot of legendary authors are just not crazy about updating to special edition because there's like if you were used to having a really like bug free experience of you know laying down nav mesh <laughs> and a whole bunch of other stuff it just got way, way worse and almost unusable mm-hmm. to a lot of those people on the special edition. I'm scared to do anything with nav mesh or the 3D builder. It's so not, it's not just Skyrim that's buggy. It's like the creation kit itself and also pretty finicky to work with. Well, depending on how much memory your computer has, like m- when I was making Ashid, I did that over like the course of like three days without sleep. I think I, I had to modify over 800 different static objects like click on one, open up the thing, hit edit, the the thing pops up, it shows you the mesh. I basically had to pick out, okay, which one of those is the rock object, change that to this texture set, and then repeat that process about like 850 sometimes. About every eight or nine times of those, my computer would run out of memory. I would try to save in between and the the creation kit would crash. And so you have to restart the creation kit about a hundred times over the course of like three days when you're doing that. I was a very new user at the time. I didn't have any extra, I didn't know any extra shortcuts, so I may have been going the totally long way, but it's the sad truth I'm going to have to deliver to RL Cool J about his uh, white snow mod that it's going to (laughs) take a lot of, like, there's no shortcut on that one. It's on the PC version, if it would take me two seconds to make Ashid, you literally just change the name of two texture files duplicate them and replace the originals and now you've got dirt cliffs instead of rock faces you're done it's completely done it replaces everything because it changes that base texture you cannot do that on the ps4 version you have to find everything that that texture was used for and replace it manually and that is crazy do you have to find every instance of that rock or is it like the one texture you can apply to all instances. Um, luckily, it they all kind of have the same, like you can basically use the same texture set for all of them, but like you can't just replace the, uh, you can't just replace the, the rock face like texture set with the dirt cliff one because you'll only make so many changes because if it didn't actually, like if a lot of meshes, they don't actually have textures necessarily applied to them. By default, they've got a, set skin and then you can apply different textures to them those rocks will just default with that gray texture so you have to go into every single one and apply that texture to every part of the mesh that uses that a lot of those bigger rock faces aren't are are actually like several pieces of that texture together so like you'll you'll um, you'll apply it to one bit and you'll see like most of the mountain face like get texture but then there's like this big strip that needs like another use of it so it's like it's it's almost impossible to do manually or blindly like you you basically have to go into every single one and eyeball it when you're oh when you're in there creating a mod can you is it pretty easy to swap between like i want to check it in the game or is it like i have to save everything close everything reopen skyrim bring it into skyrim like how does the testing process go as you're building a mod it's uh for me it's multi-stage because like uh, my computer like if i'm using my desktop it's got enough memory to be able to like just save so that I can load up it, it can actually handle loading the the game like it can it can load up the game like 10 times faster than my ps4 but my ps4 can actually run the game at 60 so <laughs> <laughs> it's something about vram I think um but the uh the pc version I basically have like my settings at wherever would be like modestly matched to the ps4 just so I'm not like seeing a whole bunch of stuff that I wouldn't otherwise be able to see um, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll basically hit save there. There's a, there's two separate save buttons. There's like regular save, like save to disc. And then there's save, like pop into like, there's save to a, to a save in the thing. And you can kind of just open the, you can open Skyrim, like after you've saved that and sort of try it out. But the, 
depending on what I'm doing with the creation kit, if I have, if I'm working with textures, it'll take me a little bit to actually be able to put it on the PS4. Cause the first thing you have to do if you've swapped a lot of textures out is you have to move your texture and your mesh folder from your data folder out of the data folder. Oops, excuse me. And, uh, cause otherwise, even if you've got all vanilla, it, it thinks that you're using external files. So it's just like one of those things I learned from Cayenne 49 that you just have to do. And then it can take like five, it takes about five minutes to actually load the, the mod into the creation kit. So that's probably the biggest pain is knowing that every time you crash, you're going to be sitting around for another five minutes waiting for it. Yeah. How does that testing process then transfer over to PS4 since you can't just pop it? Like you can't just open up the game and stuff like that. You have to like put it in the work in progress and then you actually have to go on Bethesda net and download it. Is that how that works or? Uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm usually, I've usually got my, my game open and I've got it kind of sitting at the main menu, just waiting for me. There's kind of a, the, the server gets kind of tricky. If you try to like log in and upload a file at the same time, it'll probably like, it'll probably knock you out like on one of them, like be like, okay. ah, there's like a, there's a, there's a, there's a server issue on your PS4. Like, and sometimes, sometimes the files don't always upload when you think they will. You either have to like back out of the game. The server is just finicky. I, I can't entirely figure out what just a nightmare coming that from thing. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bethesda net is an absolute nightmare and a half. It's yeah. You I mean, wait until you get into modding. You don't know the half of it. You were mentioning, um, with Ashid that, um, like that was like your first kind of go around with this. What, what would you say is like the main thing, like, or the biggest thing that you learned in that three day process with Ashid? you'll always you'll always very quickly find where your where your limitation is obviously like i mean I, like it took me about 2 weeks after i like i i did ash it i was like why is why are these other mountain mods so so big and yet you open them up and it's like there's not there's nothing in here there's no esp file it's like oh okay the entire file size is these two textures that replaced these other two textures it's like <laughs> And, and those texture files are probably like 12 megabytes a piece or something. So like, which isn't terribly big, but the, the US SEP for the PS4 is 15 megabytes. And that's one of the biggest mods like that I've, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest commonly used mods on the thing besides I think Aladon's ultimate armory, which is about 15 megabytes or something. They're both really big, mm -hmm. but they, but they're both made pretty, uh, pretty cleanly. Although I have seen the very interesting, I was testing this one mod called uh, Gemstone Way from the Nexus. The only reason why I downloaded it was because it was just an ESP file. It was just a house or like a player home of some kind. And it was like 73 megabytes. It was like, well, this thing, wow, this thing better be bigger than King Tut's like undiscovered tomb or whatever. And it turns out what had happened was the author that originally made it had auth had modified some of the, uh, the the region data or something they moved one thing and as a result it changed every single value Man. of every <laughs> single world space cell in the entire game and they didn't go into x edit and correct it so every single one of those tiny little changes like thousands of them you just scroll down the list and it's just like i'm never going to fix this for this fucker like yeah. this, there's no yeah. way there's no way there's a reason why this guy ported it and why the porting author has no idea why it's 72 megabytes like i cleaned it and exit it i don't know what to tell you it's like it's broken dude but mm -hmm. i was able to i was able to load it up onto my ps4 and run it and it was smooth now that like that that's not the crazy part a couple of weeks prior, I tried to I tried to make another mod that was like an extension of Ashid, where I took all the I took all of the the mountain ranges, and I moved them from the from the temporary. Hey, we'll just load in the full detail version of this when you get to this area, and I moved all several thousand of them to the what's referred to as the persistent world space. Oh no. Uh, I've got a video of me doing this on, on my YouTube page. The frames drop like gangbusters. It's like a 40% reduction. It's bad, but you can basically see my Falmer like stuff, like stuck blue to like some shit, like way off in the background. <laughs> but it, but is that worth a 40% performance drop? No, I basically proved no, it's, it's not. The, the tragedy is, is that that mod took me about three days of just, okay, got to open this one, like left up, left up, like just hammering on these two buttons, trying to open all of these folders just so I can highlight all of them at one time oh, and be like, move it to the persistent. And like, how many times did I get that wrong where I accidentally moved some piece of a, a mountain range that's like 
inside of a cave. It's not meant to be persistent. So then you go out into the real world and you've just got mountain ranges floating in the sky everywhere. Cause how, I, I got to know how much of the modding process is just you sitting at a computer going, oh, oh shit, not that. I live for that feeling. I gotta be honest. <laughs> it's just bliss now. Yeah, no, it's no. There's there's some like a, a, there's just something about the feeling of just saying, "Oh my god, what in the hell happened?" Like, it's it it's kind of a it's it's kind of funny because I can usually tell what happened, but like it, there's something about the physics engine in that game that you never mm-hmm. really are sure what you're gonna get sometimes. Yeah, even if it's not modded, you have no idea what's gonna happen. <laughs> so, uh, is Ashid the only mod that you have done from scratch because i think a lot of people know you for being uh the one who does amazing ports from nexus to ps4 that was definitely a a completely original idea i had Mm -hmm. i was actually trying to figure out how uh how like this one mod did like there's a there's a mod that on the ps4 that that says that it does increase draw distance but i wasn't able to really verify that with either video or or whatnot. I was kind of trying to figure out what they were doing, and in the process, I somehow really, really screwed up my mountain ranges, and it like it, it did something to my brain, like the to, to say the least. Like I, I got, I got basically the the visual equivalent of taste aversion. I was like, I can't look at these mountains anymore. I have to, I have to fix them. They look like garbage. They look like saran mm. wrap. They look terrible. <laughs> like. Mountains don't look like that. The, the, oh, yeah. real, it, the real trick is trying to get it to look good at a distance, which is why I've completely adopted picturesque as my new weather mod, because there's something about the way that it darkens the background, the fog. It yep. actually makes the mountains look like that that deeper gray or brown. Co- like it makes it yeah. far much more believable that those are the same textures. Mm-hmm. And then and then yeah, if you yeah. and then bet- between if you've got your LOD set right, like if if it fades out at just the right way and, and your eye adapt doesn't come up at the right way, like it'll actually preserve a lot of that really dirtiness of the, of the rock textures over time. So it's, it's such a multi-layered process, but it's, it's really nice to, you know, that's been really nice to have. Cause I don't think I'll probably move on from that weather mod after this. That'll probably be my, my main base for, for visual overhauls from here on out. Mm. That's, that's really interesting that the whole, um, the whole inspiration behind it was just, I looked at this for too long and now it's <laughs> sitting wrong in my stomach. It's, I couldn't deal with it anymore. It was like, I, I will work for days with that, like to fix this and I'll, I'll fix it. But with those, um, like the layers are obviously like a difficulty and just kind of like launching that creation club and, trying to find exactly what you're looking for is that difficulty. Would you say that's, that's probably the biggest difficulty that you've encountered during this process? Because what it seems like is that, you know, you're kind of new to this and that's kind of what started the itch. So like while you've been scratching that itch, are those the most difficult things you've encountered? Uh, just right now, the, I think the hardware limitation on my machine, it, I just don't have a very good computer for, for using that particular part of the creation kit. Everything else, it seems to take just fine. And the, uh, the, uh, companion tool that, that almost all mod users use alongside the creation kit is this program called XEdit. And it makes basically like breaks down all of your mods basically into like a big spreadsheet. You can kind of open them up by category it's way, way easier. You can't do all the things that you can do in Creation Kit with it. It would be a godsend if they somehow made like an integration where you could, while you were in Creation Kit, you could also view it in Xedit form, but dare to dream. Like, I don't even, not even the PC, like not even the most advanced of the PC crowd can can do that. Like it's you either using one or the other. Um, but that program never crashes. So if you're like, I do most of my work in that now, cause a lot of it's like trying to figure out what part of the, you know, f- picking out a whole bunch of mods that I really like and trying to find, Oh, okay. Like I've, I've always wanted to know how that, that system works. So I'll, I'll forward that into something that I'm working on and kind of play with that for a little bit. But exit, it definitely makes it a lot easier if you're just trying to put something together. You can't build what I, what I put together with, uh, with just the creation kit. It would be hell on toast. <laughs> just, I mean, it'd be terrible. Like you would, it would be so messy. Like it, X said it keeps getting brought up over and over because it's the only program that can actually delete files from a mod. Like they weren't there. 
try to delete something on the creation kit and it just flags it as deleted, which creates problems for other mods. If it like oh uses those same files, like if, if a mod loaded after that one uses that same file, it will try to draw from it, find that it's deleted and might like it, you might not even get past the loading screen. That's, so, that's a lot of, that's usually why they say that mods that delete items should be go, should go last. Cause if anything else goes after it, it'll cause issues. Through all of the mods that you've uh, created, because I know, I mean, like I was saying before, a lot of a lot of the ones are, are uh, really care painstakingly brought over from uh, the Nexus and PC mods and stuff like that. But is there any type of theme or um, like through line with your mods that you want to communicate like with your body of work or do you look at them all very separately? I think I would definitely say that I'm a visual modder. Like I, I'm not really interested. Like I, I've got modder friends that do gameplay changes and whatnot and i'd rather use their stuff than try to go down that rabbit hole Mm -hmm. i mean when you're working with visual changes at least you kind of know where the overwrites are going to happen but gameplay changes are i don't it's that's a different level of immersion i'm i'm much more focused on the uh like the weather the lighting the the textures everything just trying to make it look like a different world as opposed to yeah trying to make it feel like a totally different game that's that doesn't like interest me as much. I guess you could say like, I, I don't, I don't have the, really the drive to, to want to do that. If I want to do good gameplay, I have destiny two. I have division two. I have the final fantasy seven remake. I'm good on gameplay if I want to play, but right. I work in, I, I work in Tamriel. Like I, yeah. like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to build a world there and mm-hmm. it's yeah. doesn't really like as, you know, as long as everybody's there when I load my game up, like I haven't run through the campaign in so long. Like, But I'm kind of you could say I'm trying to make a movie more than like I'm trying to I'm trying to place things for like a movie set like to go off like like in a in a certain way like I'm I'm a cinematographer like in my in my previous line of work. So it's like having a I have sort of a a big idea of it in my head of how I can just combine a lot of my like practical art skills together and voice acting and whatnot. I'm trying to get involved with voice acting for some of these other Skyrim projects. So like, I'm going to be in this world for a long time. Like, yeah. yeah and I think, I, I think just as fans of your mods, we, I, we can say that all of the ones that we've shown from you so far, like gorgeous. And we, we keep them on because it keeps the game. Not only does the game run really smooth, but it just looks so much more beautiful. So you've definitely helped Im- improve our gameplay. Um, but I think Tyler, should we maybe hop into some of the community submitted questions? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I I just want to just trail back to that just I I love that answer of like you're just setting the stage for maybe other modders to come in with gameplay stuff, but you're like let's let's look at the visuals of Skyrim and set the stage for everyone else like an assistant role. That that's great. I love I got, that. I got the idea from uh watching like the behind the scenes for those old like scum engine video game like uh, maniac mansion and day of the tentacle full throttle you, you guys did you guys play those old lucas arts games i feel I like not, everybody did watched but them it's they are just so much fun i love that like that really minimalist like 8-bit like huge pixel art style but like it's it's really just i i love the i love puzzle progression type type video games like that where you're just you know, you've got one house and three characters and you're just like running all over the house and passing like items to each other because one can't yeah. get to the other and stuff because one's locked in the basement, one's in the attic. And it's like, like I, I love that type of stuff, but they basically treated the whole thing like a giant puppet show. And ha- hearing that was like, huh, like, I guess it doesn't have to be that different. Like nowadays, I mean, yeah, all the systems are still there. So, so our first question Uh, comes from Sir Lucifer Vampiro, and they ask, no specific modding questions, but a few general ones. Like, where do you begin, and how do you get started? So how they worded it is like, a modding for dummies guide. What would you say to them is like a, a kind of good, like, startup of like, hey, this is modding for dummies? Well, um... I would, I would kind of have like, if, if you're, it's like that, I, I guess I, I, I promised one user that I would sort of compare it to this. Uh, it's kind of like investing in like the last train set that you'll ever own. I don't know if that analogy makes sense. My dad said that when he was older, he like always wanted to just have like 
some gigantic, like really expensive, nice train set that he could basically just like, you know, have that ran all through the house or that you could paint each car. Like it's a very like immersive hobby type thing. And I think that I think I took that to heart when I like because I see Skyrim is basically like one gigantic train set. But you sort of have to, you know, you have to take the you have to take the time to get into it. And you obviously will have to make like a, a personal investment into it. A lot of the really good stuff uh, f- that that does work on PS4 is like the, the authors are adamant. Do not upload this to Bethesda. If you publish this, I will smack you like do not upload. Like there's some really, really good stuff that I would love to share. But the author is like, no, a million times. No, do not ask me again. Like I do not want to see that on Bethesda's servers. They do not support the modding community. Like there's oh, some wow. PC, there's some PC users that are very, very at like not cool with the way that Bethesda runs things. And they're very, very like, and there are some stuff that like, like the realistic lighting overhaul, it wants to stay exclusively on the, uh, on the PC. Mm-hmm. Is there a, is there like a specific resource that you uh, initially had when, when getting into creating mods? Like it was there a place that you went to get the bulk of your information if someone were to want to get into starting? Uh, honestly, I think I kind of, I kind of winged it. I, I was, uh, I had been in contact with, uh, LBGSHI for a while prior to that. Cause I was kind of like, cause he had, he had said like, he had sent me some, uh, some, uh, some resource links or whatever. Like when I said I was thinking about getting, in, getting into it, he was like, oh yeah. Like if, uh, whenever you install the creation kit, make sure you add these lines or whatever to your, to your INI files so that you can load up multiple masters at once, which is basically like incredible. It's essential, but it's not by default. So yeah. Do you find so that, people in the modding community are pretty good about sharing, uh, if someone were to ask questions to them? I think once you take the, uh, I think once you cross the threshold to going from user to like, I have the tools, they are probably a lot more keen on it because like the, the problem is, is sort of like, you know, imagine somebody asks you to to port something from, you know, PC to, to PS4 and it isn't exactly like a, it isn't exactly straightforward. And so you might have to do some work and like, if they have problems with it, it's like, so you're saying that I have to babysit this mod just for you from now on? Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, and not that it's, it sounds, it sounds kind of rude. It's just like, yeah, I got like, you know, I got a lot of stuff I'm kind of working on. Like it's sometimes it can just, it, it can feel a little small fish sometimes. It's like, I just like, I, if it's not, if I'm not going to port it, if I don't, if I'm not going to use it in my order, like you won't find stuff in my library that I personally either won't add at some point to my campaign setting for, for visual or like reference purposes or, or I've either tried or it's either been in a previous iteration of it, but like my quality control process is quite thorough. Like I, yes. I'll, 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 I will look at stuff for a very long time and just be like, what is up with this? How would this one particular user that nitpicks everything that I do nitpick this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so kind of get that, like you need to be able to speak the common language of it. Like you got to have some, yeah, kind of they, understanding. it's going to be very, very challenging to, to really have a conversation with an author about like what you're th- like, if they think that they're going to have to do all the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if they think that they just have to share like a file or just be like, oh yeah, just, you know, just set the, the depth of field or whatever to this and you'll be fine. You know, like they're much more willing to, to just share like little information if they think that you can do it yourself. And I, I'm kind of adopting the same way. Cause like I can help with load order and whatnot, but like if it's a PS4 exclusive, I don't really know what's in that mod. So like if they put anything else in there by accident or if they didn't right. clean it and exit it, like <sighs> Like I, unless I have a copy of the PC version, I don't like, I really can't say anything other than I'm not entirely sure, but if it's functioning as it's supposed to, it ought to do this, but there's always a, Mm -hmm. but if I don't have a copy of it, there will always be a, but because I just, because the unknown is, is the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of the, 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 the lesson to them is like maybe as like a resource, like try and like, it's almost kind of like you learn by doing. So like dive into it first, get your specific list of questions and like 
kind of get that vocabulary down a little bit. And then it seems like the community is more than willing to help if you put in that initial effort. I would definitely say be prepared to make mistakes for a very long time and not have anything ready for yourself. That's even like that you like, don't be, don't be expecting to have something ready that you want to use. That's just like awesome within the first few days. Like it, you are learning a new language. You are learning a new process. It's nobody has ever just jumped into one of these things and been like, Oh man, like if they have, it was it was luck of the draw or they had knowledge of the system from a previous game. Yeah. So diabetes underscore 98 asks great name. Um, how much planning goes into creating mods in some of the more like populated areas of the game, whereas like other mods are like might be interfering with that. And is there like a, a like a reach out process of like hey, I'm going to be adding this or doing this here. Do you have almost like, do you have something that would interfere with that? Well, the PC crowd, luckily, because like most of the the really popular stuff is either published or has been published on multiple platforms for for years. Like JK's Skyrim, I want to say was originally put out in almost like 2013. Like oh, most wow, of yeah. most of that mod, like he he stopped modding, I think, a couple years ago. So he's got uh, what I refer to as torchbearers, which are people who like professionally maintain his mod and carry on with the like he's left his channel essentially to to them to keep like to keep the JK name going and updated with everything else. Uh, the current author for that, I can't remember what his name is, but he's he, he I mean, I, I see him posting on stuff all the time. It's like, yeah, I, I made a. I made a, a patch for JK's like whatever for that. So um, I think the fact that uh, that authors like have access to like to straight up to the files, they can either choose to like disregard that it's already there. But they say, you know, I didn't really I didn't make this to be compatible with JK's and I probably won't. That's I, I see that tag a lot on stuff like if it's especially if it's a place where JK's is very prevalent, like Whiterun or many of the major cities like those 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 mods tend to show up in like the guides for how to really like overhaul your your Skyrim experience like the the top graphics ones usually all recommend that you get some form of JK's for almost every single city just because his decorations are so good yeah so like almost look at like maybe before you get started with yours like maybe look at what's already there first and plan ahead. So, so if you know that you're going to be making a patch for a mod, you might actually make it dependent on the original mod, especially if you're like moving stuff around a little bit. If you're straight up making a mod that you want to make compatible, what you'll do is basically you'll just open up the asset files for that in the creation kit while you're making the other thing. So that way everything that's in that mod is already there. So you won't have to worry about it being there. But if you move any of those objects, it'll become dependent on that or like on that okay. new mod. So yeah. if you just wanted to add stuff that was compatible, you would just kind of like load up JKs or whatever. And then you would just work around that space. Is that sort of how you did looking up at a starry sky, uh, integrating like Yuki's uh, like green, white run and stuff like that? What I did with that was I took the I took the all in one white run mod Um, and, or excuse me, I took the all in one texture, re, uh, repatch thing. I had to redo the, uh, like the world space placement of a lot of the houses. Cause like the, what she did, a she used a shortcut to, to sort of do her stuff. I think a lot faster, probably because she has similar issues with the creation kit crashing that I do, um, where she created duplicates of all those houses so that she could texture them, I think individually, and then merge it all together so that she was using less data at once. Um, but what result, what happened was when you go into like the world space where it says, okay, like this reference file places this, like this particular house in this particular spot, these are in the, like the, the base Skyrim game. This is Mm -hmm. like what makes sure that houses are in the right places in towns. And she went in and replaced all of those individual ones with her, her duplicate one, which works if that's all you're trying to do. But because her textures were only stuck in to those duplicate meshes, it wouldn't apply to any of the other houses that got added with the same original meshes. So I went in and just moved all the, the stuff over from the duplicates to the originals so that anything that got added would be like compatible. 
So then what's it to ya asks, is modding worth it? Because they see like a lot of people quit due to the community. You kind of touched on that earlier. Like I have, I have Bethesda thought about that answer. Um, I would say that not everybody quits because of the, the, if people may quit because of the community, but not always because of the same reasons. I'm sure there have been plenty of users out there that have been rubbed wrong by fellow user, you know, fellow mo- like mod authors or, or users that just don't know when to quit or something. But Jazzy, he, I think he's been out of the game since like 2017. He's got a a, a thing on his nexus page basically saying like i i can't do this anymore it's it's just not fun for me anymore i've done everything that i wanted to do and i just Mm -hmm. don't want to like it didn't sound like it was really about the community it could have been who knows i mean you reach that level of popularity i'm sure you get a lot of messages but i don't think that everybody necessarily quits because like i don't think uh, that uh that jk quit because like he probably didn't love it anymore i'm sure that a lot of them stopped because at least they know that somebody's taking over for them like on their work Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. when i when i thought that yuki was going to retire like i i was like i didn't view it as a golden opportunity to like you know to somehow like take credit for her work it was more just like how do i keep your work going like you've got such a distinct style that like i can't i can't turn away from it like and i but i wanted to be a i wanted to be a part of it and having having her blessing and like sending her my updates and having her really like my stuff is basically like i don't i don't need your validation either of you i don't need <laughs> their validation out there i've got yuki's validation like <laughs> that's like yeah that's more than i could ever have hoped for cuz she is the reason why i do this like as soon as i put on her witch light ring and the fucking fire went blue it was just like this is what i want to fucking do like yeah. this is what i want to like i know what i want to do now like it was uh, yeah, she is the she is the spark of of inspiration in in all of this for yeah. me. Yeah, she for sure makes some eye catching some of some of maybe the most unique stuff I've ever seen on on PlayStation Four for modding. It's it's really incredible. Her houses are just like you go inside them. I was just like, this is somebody's actual like this place is comfy yeah. as shit. Like this is yeah. this is somebody's actual house. Like there's so much a, character. It's mm-hmm, Yuki's I've, sweets. The way she makes food looks so delicious. I'm hoping she keeps making stuff. I know she's kind of working on her new like photo filter thing. I just sent her a copy of the uh, the the mod that I made for her this last week, and she she really liked that. She was posting on her Twitter about it. That that'll be fun to publish. You That's guys will nice. you guys yeah, will when, like that. When's that one coming out? Uh, pretty soon. I think I've gotten all the I think I've gotten all the bugs worked out. It was just like adding tons and tons of items to this one chest like you kind of have to there's no way to do it not one at a time i'm not really sure if there's a way to just drag all of them but um i ended up i ended up having to use uh use pieces of uh, tls thaumaturgy as a as like a base for for everything because he's already got like you know 300 some items in one chest and i have open permission from the lawful to use any of his work or assets and what i and what i make so that's the nice thing to hear is that everyone is super open it seems like most everyone is super open to like yeah if if you know what you're doing take what you need yeah a lot of them realize you know that it's not like originality is a it's it's a very tricky word you know like if you're on if you're on pc and you straight up like if you created that mesh or whatever like there's in, if you get JK's Dawnstar, for example, not like there's no PS4 version of it right now because the, there's a boat parked in the in the water outside Dawnstar by the docks that is not vanilla. If I want to make a vanilla version of that, I will have to replace that boat, scale it, skin it, and like you know replace the na- like and fix the nav meshing and stuff. That's my biggest upcoming challenge right now because I really want to make the uh, the merge for. Um, the great city of or like the great cities and the the jk skyrim so that you can have both of those changes in the same cities at one time it's just really tricky because a lot of several of the changes are ongoing because that that patch is still being made so it's it's almost like a moot point to try to to try to fix it right now because if if they do one thing different i'm gonna have to redo everything and it's just like Mm. oh that's gonna that's gonna take me days to to do right I'm I'm actually hoping that to you know I'm hoping to inspire more people to get into this because I think there just needs to be more of us, like we we need to be able to work with each other and 
you know, right. and help each other finish projects if one of us got has a skill set that the other one doesn't. Yeah, I think coming together almost like a ramshackle team of people creating different parts and stuff like that that can bounce assets off each other and also creative design decisions and everything. I think like that's incredible to hear that that is kind of getting there. That is the real dream. I got the idea from uh, from Treehawk when he basically said like one single modder cannot do what yeah. three modders together can do. Like the three brains is is going to give you a much more three dimensional picture than than one. Out of my own curiosity, do you have any idea why uh, Treehawk took down the mods off PS4 and then put them back up uh, maybe like a year ago or whatever? Um, the creation club had something to do with that. When they update the creation club, they update the creation kit, but they don't really like, they don't make it any easier for, for mod authors. And so, so he, Mika ghost and Cayenne 49 as a collective statement, partially because the Bethesda mod manager, like the community manager uses Dreamweaver and ports of call. So (laughs) like, yeah, it's like, Hey, you want that? You like that? <laughs> Fix your shit. Like that was there. That was basically that was that was the whole thing. Like they it wasn't about the it wasn't about the half a million downloads that they got. Like they got a half a million fucking downloads on that mod. Like they might be the kings of this shit, and they walked away. Major respect for that. I mean, that's that's a very tough move to make. But I mean, to them, it's just Dreamweaver is just a mod that they really made for like five or six people that they happen to be sharing with a mil- you know millions of people. But like, yeah. re- but really, they could. They could take it or leave it. They could take it down and just be like, this is ours. You know, yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it, but this is ours. Like they could do that whenever they wanted to, if they, if they felt like it. We had, we had one question again that I think you, you had answered previously from Sasha Blub on managing multiple assets together or how to find the structures within the game. So like if you wanted to, build a castle for instance as the example they gave like is how do you go about like knowing where to pull those assets or textures and everything from to create something new with them you'd basically open up the if you were looking for a building you'd look open up the static full um tab on creation kit and then open up architecture and then kind of and then in each each of the uh, architectures are based on like uh which region they they appear in or which city they belong to. And there's some that uh, are like classified as like either Imperial or dungeon. Those are like Imperial is like any, any uh, castles like out outdoor um, fort structures that look like Helgen or anything like that. That's classified as Imperial. Uh, And then there's dungeon stuff too, which I think covers like everything from like the Dwemer and the Falmer stuff to black reach and a few other places. Um, But yeah, it's, it's actually all quite, it's it's everything's pretty well labeled and everything's pretty uh it, like the folders are are pretty well marked as well it'll take it'll take you some time to sometimes figure out where you're at like sometimes you'll be looking for something really specific and it's like god like why can't i find this object and it just happens to be in some other folder like you think it's in architecture but it's actually in clutter or something it's it, it so it, it sometimes it's just like a a, a scavenger hunt yeah, like a lot of folder digging. A little bit, yeah. Like, but if, but a lot of, like, a lot of those, that, that stuff is all there in the creation kit. So you're able to at least, like, pull it up and you can, you know, hit, like, edit and you can, you can see all of its, like, stats. Like, what's, you know, what kind of, uh, directional material does it have on it? Is it, like, a snow thing? Is it ash? Is it moss? Um, like, then, like, the, the angle of that. And then, um, but, you can also hit like edit and then it'll show you like a picture of the mesh and then it'll show like it'll have like a tab right next to it where it has all of the pieces of the mesh bro- broken down. That's where you put your texture sets in at. So like depending on how many pieces are actually in that mesh, if it's only got one mesh, then you might, or if, if it's only got one mesh piece, you might be looking at a really rough texture swap. Mm hmm especially if it's like an entire wall and it's got like a lot of like unique detail in it. That's like pictured in the diffuse layer. Like it, it might get, it might get really tricky if like, if those, if those pieces are actually a part of the picture itself, um, my upcoming armor mod, uh, I, I reskinned everything with the same diffuse layer just for the heck of it. It was like part of a challenge. It was like, somebody said, you can't make an entire armor set with one diffuse layer. I was like, watch me. Just yeah. watch me. Like, I I'll make this. it look good. I'll make it look real good, too. And then and then somebody said, you can't make a mod based on the theme 
can love bloom on the battlefield. It's like, watch me, you poetic <laughs> asshole. Like, watch me. Like, I will do it. And and not only did that, I delivered that and a gift to Yuki all at once. And I, it's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. Like, I, 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 that's I'm looking forward to that one. You haven't seen shaders that look like this before. I called it uh, 13 Cherry Blossoms Bloomed on the Battlefield because it's not only does it like it gives you a whole bunch of armor to, to choose from, but then each of these shaders basically projects like a floral pattern onto your your armor, your skin, your weapons, respectively. Just like if you if you load them in the right order, you'll get like several different layers of color. And oh, wow, it's it's yeah, I I don't know how I came up with the idea, but it's like I got to get this like I like Yuki will love this. Like I so I was yeah. like, I'm, I can't wait to, and she, and she does. So that, that's, uh, that's really the important part. Yeah. I'm excited to check that one out. Yeah. I'm excited to upload that one. Um, five, three, five lounge asks. So do you port all of your mods from PC to PS4 or do you start from scratch? I don't, uh, I don't port, everything i suppose I, I definitely know how to do some stuff from scratch my specialty is really like texture sets i've just got an eye for detail mm-hmm. in that like and i'm i'm pretty tenacious about it like i'll just you know it might it might take me like a day to like it it probably takes about a day to do a uh to do a, a city texture set because you have to you have to kind of figure out like okay like first you have to actually set your your texture sets in the right spot and sometimes it's like oh like how do i you know which one of these which one of these randomly labeled part of the mesh is the window, which one of them is the trim and everything else. So part of it is just making yourself like a map so that you can start building those, um, texture sets. Mm -hmm. And then it just, it takes a while to really, I think to get it all to, to come together. But once you've, once you kind of decide like what you, what you want to do, even if it's not exactly what you want to do, the fact that once you have your map, like once you have all your files laid out, at least if like, okay, well, I don't like the way that would look. So at least I know that if I just change this texture set now, I can view my changes across the entire thing as opposed to feeling like I have to start from scratch every single time. So mm-hmm. you can, you are every time you make a mod that you think you might make a second time, you are saving yourself that much work because yeah, you yeah. can just, because you can just start from that point. I think uh, the, one of the great things about um, Anna's all in one texture set was the fact that like in her, in the files, she's basically got a texture set made for almost every single texture in the game in there somewhere. So like if I want to make more out of that, I can basically draw from that and she's got them all labeled as like the file name and I know those file names. So it's like, Oh cool. Like save me so much time. Yeah. It seems like it goes along with any creative endeavor. It's all about, efficiency so you don't want to build everything from scratch every time if it can be efficient make it efficient absolutely yeah you yeah no one should want to do the do it like <laughs> all the way through every single time like if you've done the work previously just just make a copy and do it uh, and just make changes like it's yeah <laughs> it's way easier so uh we got just a just a few more questions here. This one is uh, from another international, a French uh, member of the community named Serbier sixty two, and they ask: Is it complicated to manage the compa- compatibility between the game and the mods, and then between different mods? Just managing all the compatibility there. Um, if you if you spend an awful like I, I try my best to have as much of my load order on my PS four like. Uh, when I'm, when I'm really testing, I try to have as many things in there that I know are either like very clean, which basically means if it's by LG, uh, LBG SHI or Cayenne 49, I know that it's copacetic. Like I know that it's going to be fine. Like there's no extra surprises. Um, those, uh, I usually keep those in my load order. Cause like a lot of their, a lot of their stuff is really good for testing. I use several, um, things from, uh, LBG, like the, I think the ring of unlocking the race scale and creature or increaser, the, the time scale thing and some, and, and then the uh, ring of animation, just cause you can get to like, you can use the, the float up command to, to get out of bounds and whatnot. And you usually get around walls and stuff if you, if you have to. Uh, yeah. The next question comes, uh, same, same person. And they just want to know if you have an intention to work in the video game world. Um, not terribly. I'd have more interest in going into probably like voice acting and whatnot than 
than actually working on video games. It's, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the environment is just a little too, uh, you know, like they're not, it's like being, I don't, I heard somebody, uh, I think from rocket jump recently talk about how, like, it really doesn't matter how much you've done, like amateur wise, when you try to go into like the professional field, they don't care what you've done. If you've never like made anybody any money or if, so it's, oh, I don't yeah. exactly have, I don't exactly have like the, the best resume for it, but like, I will say that from what I know about Skyrim, that game was made by modders, like not, yeah. not after the fact, but like currently like there are like there are people there on people no like i mean the people who made that game like are, are were were basically modders like for for other bethesda games like the there's a guy who uh who worked for sky the original skyrim he created the critter system like the the system for like bugs and whatnot that was completely not there before um before he got there so definitely more of a hobby for you to nitpick through this stuff than like a desire of work. For me, it's basically like I'm I'm just schizo enough to feel like I'm I am my own little <laughs> D and D group in my head, and this is our this is our endeavor. So it's yeah, it's it's definitely like a it it feels kind of like playing a video game, but yet I don't know. It's like it's like all it's like all gather and no hunt, but y- you get like you get a lot of gather, so yeah. it's. <laughs> Um, but I kind of have to play other games if I really want to, you know, get that, that gameplay experience, but like nothing does world simulating like Skyrim. Yeah. It's definitely something special. Like uh, doing like, I, I, I went to a barbecue last night and like we were outside by, by like this lake and I just couldn't stop looking at, at like the scenery and thinking like, how in the hell did Arendelle get the color of the sunset from my region perfect like the color is perfect the cut like everything like and i don't know like it so it's it's really cool to to basically work in that in that simulated environment and then to then basically go outside and be like wow like you look at the water in skyrim it's like that's not water it's not real it's not even it's not water it's just it's just data that like it's into it's flagged as space in in time that's water It's it's an elaborate layer of textures separated by like cloud you know, fog near and fo- like in, it's just somehow it works. And it's just like, this is, it, it's so insane. Cause you, then you look at the real thing and it's just like, I mean, I thought that it was complex in the, you know, it's like, you think it's complex in the game and then you look out at the horizon. It's just like, dang, like it's, it, yeah. it, it so it's, uh, I don't know for as, as somebody like me who really loves to just sit and watch the, watch the scenery. It's, uh, I, I, I don't know what else, what I would do without it. Yeah. Well, Kennedy, thank you so much for uh, coming on and chatting with us about the behind the scenes and how how the modding process works and everything. I I learned more today than I think I maybe did the entirety of high school. Yeah. So (laughs) I need to like this is like that Mark Cerny, like PS5. (laughs) Yeah. Like thing where I just need to kind of like sit down after this and just kind of like take that time to digest I wrote down a lot of terms. I got to go Google after this, you know, <laughs> you guys, no, can thank you've been amazing. The, the, you guys can thank the years that I've listened to Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson just talk for like hours without like, <laughs> as I, I've definitely oh, having a lot of time to myself since, yeah, since last August is definitely like, it's made me better at, at this type of thing. Yeah, well, thank you for coming on. And if people want to find any of your mods for PS4, you can go on Bethesda Net, and it's going to be user be very of a. I also have a YouTube channel of the same name. I'm also oh, on it. Tw- I'm also on Twitter, but I really just use that to keep in touch with Yuki. Yeah, plug away. If there's anything else you want people to know about, if there's anything else, yeah, you got that- a Patreon going on. What's 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 the deal? Plug Did you away. Buy stock in something recently that you want to like put out there. No, nope, um, that's insider trading. You cannot do that. <laughs> yeah, that is against that. federal guidelines. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And if you have uh, anything that anything you guys want to send uh, our way, you can find me at Lurking Lion on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Subtly Cool. Uh, but really, just leave them at Shapeless Media on Twitter, or the comments are the best place to ask future questions. You'll see community posts. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, let us know if you liked it. We will we will have a new video for you guys shortly. <laughs>